Under the velvet sky so grand, the tale awaits in dreamland. Close your eyes, breathe deep and slow, to a world unveiled. We softly go, whispers of the night, calling you to rest. Dinner stories, find true Adelity's nest. Let the moon's gentle glow, silver and mild, guide your spirit. Oh, precious child, drift on the notes of this twilight song, where dreams dance and nights belong. Surrender to the stars in their watchful keep. As we weave a tale to cradle your sleep, so rest your head and with a sigh, unfold your wings of sleep and fly. In the world, all is right and well. Drift into stories only night can tell. The Talking Trees of Tantalia The platform gently touched down on a lush, green landscape marked by towering trees whose leaves whispered in a chorus of hushed tones. This was the Tantalia, known for its ancient and wise talking trees. Liam stepped off the platform, feeling the soft earth beneath his feet. He looked up at the immense trees, their branches swaying gently as if beckoning him forward. Hello? Liam called out tentatively. Welcome, traveler, to the forest of Tantalia. Hi, deep, resonant voice replied. One of the larger trees at the forest's badge had a sea seeming to look right into Liam's soul, Milliam. I was told uh, I would find a challenge here, Liam said, stepping closer to the tree. Yes, young one. Here, you must learn the language of the trees to find the path forward. The tree responded, We'll listen to our whispers, for each of us holds a word of a riddle you must solve. Liam nodded, intrigued by the challenge. He walked deeper into the forest, listening to the whispers of the trees. Each tree he passed whispered a different word, and Liam repeated them under his breath, trying to piece together the rail. After some time, he returned to the large tree at the edge of the forest. Hey, Rudel. Rigan, is it what grows when it eats, but dries when it drinks? Mice? The trimming his eyes twinkled. Yes, he has listened. Well, the answer? Lean thought for a moment. Her fire. He replied, confidently. Correct. The tree boomed. You have learned the language of the trees and solved the riddle. Your path leads to the whispering wind, which will guide you to your next destination. Liam thanked the tree and followed a narrow path that led out of the forest. The path opened up to a wide meadow where the wind seemed to carry voices and melodies. As he walked into the meadow, the wind picked up, whispering softly in his ear. Zeke Fapikwa, the wind sings, and there you shall find your next challenge. Liam looked ahead and saw a distant mountain rising above the landscape, its peak shrouded in clouds. He knew that was where he needed to go next, to the mountain where the wind sings. Liam journeyed across the meadow, the whispering wind guiding him gently. As he approached the base of the mountain, the path became steeper and the air cooler. Mountains seemed to hum with a hidden energy, 
its melody growing stronger with each step he took. Halfway up the mountain, Liam encountered a small hooded figure sitting on a rock. The figure looked up, revealing a face that seemed ageless with eyes that sparkled like the night sky. Greetings, traveler. I'm the keeper of the mountain. The figure said in a voice that echoed the mountain's melody. What brings you to this sacred place? I'm following the whispering wind. It led me here, Liam replied. The wind speaks true. You are here to learn the song of the wind. Listen closely, for the wind carries the notes you need to learn. The keeper of the mountain advised. Liam closed his eyes, letting the wind's melody wash over him. It was a complex tune, with high notes that seemed to dance with the breeze, and lower tunnels that resonated deep within the mountain. After a while, the keeper spoke again. Can you repeat the song of the wind? Lian took a deep breath and began to hum the tune he had heard. It was not perfect, but he captured the essence of the song, the highs, the lows, the rhythm of the wind. The keeper nodded approvingly. Well done. You have a keen ear. The song of the wind is a melody of harmony and balance. Remember, it will, as it will guide you in times of need. Liam felt a sense of accomplishment. Having learned the song, thank you, he said. What comes next? Your path now leads to the forest of whispers. The keeper said, pointing towards a dense forest that lay beyond the mountain. Here, you will face your next challenge. Will you thank the keeper and contain his journal? Descending the mountain and heading towards the forest of whispers. The sign was the wind still echoing, still echoing. As Liam approached the forest of whispers, the air grew dense with a symphony of hushed voices. The forest was alive with murmurs, each truly seemingly engaged in its own silent conversation. Stepping into the forest, Liam felt as though he was entering a different world. The light here was dim, filtered through the dense canopy above, and the ground was carpeted with soft moss. Hello? Liam ventured, his voice almost a whisper in the quiet of the forest. Welcome, Liam. A chorus of voices responded, emanating from all around him. In the Forest of Whispers, every tree holds a secret of the past, or a whisper of the future. Your challenge is to find the ancient oak, the oldest tree in the forest, and hear its tale. Leon nodded, taking in the task ahead. He began to wander through the forest, listening to the whispers. Some trees spoke of long-gone eras, their words like echoes of history. Others whispered of things yet to come. Their voices filled with the promise of a future. After some time, the infant himself in front of an immense oak tree, its trunk wide and gnarled with age. It stood out from the rest, a testament to the passage of time. E ancient oak. William asked, looking up at the towering tree. I am, the tree replied, its voice deep and resonant. I have witnessed the ebb and flow of centuries, the dance of seasons, the whispers of time. Listen to my tale, and you shall... Queen listened intently, as the ancient elk recounted stories from long ago 
tales of kingdoms rising and falling, a star is born and extinguished. The stories were filled with lessons of resilience, change, and the ancient downtonite tadness of all things. As the tale came to an end, Lian felt a profound sense of awe and understanding. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, he said humbly. The wisdom is yours to carry forward, the ancient oak replied. Your journey will soon take you to the rebellion of the chess pieces. Pierre, you will need all the lessons you have learned. Ling, think the ancient oak and left the forest, feeling enriched by the stories and wisdom imparted to him. He was ready for his next challenge. Curious about what the rebellion of the chess pieces would entail. Leaving a forest of whispers behind, Liam found himself on a path that led to a vast, open field. He could see figures moving about, their motions precise and deliberate. As he drew closer, Leo realized the figures were life-sized chess pieces, each moving across a giant chessboard that spanned the field. He noticed the pieces were not just moving, in standard chess patterns. They seemed to be strategizer, communicating with one another. The night piece, its horse rearing majestically, trotted up to Liam. Welcome to the rebellion of the chess pieces, Ned said, its voice strong and clear. I'm Knight Lancelot. Here in the midst of a great strategy to gain our independence from the rigid rules of chess, Wayne looked around fascinated. Why do you seek independence? For too long, we have been bound by the rules of a game we did not choose, replied a bishop, gliding gracefully towards them. Nisi Lee nodded, understanding their desire for autonomy. How can I help? We need a human perspective to guide our strategy, said the queen. Join the group. You must help us complete our plan of liberation. Liam felt a surge of responsibility. He thought back to the lessers. He led Lennon to our land as listening to the wisdom of the ages. Using these principles, he began to help the chess pieces formulate a plan that banned that strategy with the desire for freedom. Together, they worked through the night, discussing, planning, and revising. Finally, as dawn broke, he had a plan that satisfied all the pieces on the board. Ah, you have helped us immensely, Liam, said the king, moving forward to thank him. Your insights have been invaluable. Liam felt a sense of pride, happy to assist it in their quest. I wish you all the best in your pursuit of freedom, he said. As a token of our gratitude, take this, said Knight Lancelot, handing on the small, intricately carved chess piece. It will remind you of the strength found in unity and the power of a will blast plan. Thinking the chess pieces, Liam continued on his journey, the chess piece safely tucked in his pocket. He felt ready for whatever lay ahead, his heart and mind enriched by the experiences and lessons he had encountered in the land of Wunsi. With the chess, peace in his pocket, Liam walked away from the chessboard field, feeling a sense of accomplishment. He had helped the chess pieces in their quest for independence, 
learning about strategy and the importance of making one's own choices. As he walked, the scenery began to change and he found himself approaching a grand border that appeared out of nowhere. It was an elegant structure, seemingly made of glass and light, shimmering under the sun. Welcome, Liam. A voice called out. Liam turned to see a regal figure dressed in a gown that flowed like water. Her presence commanding yet kind. Who are you? Liam asked, taken aback by the sudden appearance of the ballroom and its host. I am the Duchess of the Dreamland Ball. You have been invited to attend the ball tonight. A celebration of all the realms within the land of Wingsy, she explained, gesturing towards the ballroom. Liam felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. I've never been to a ball before, he admitted. There's a first time for everything, the Duchess said with a smile. Here, you will meet many who you have helped, and many who will help you in the future. It is an event of significance, where true forms and intentions are revealed. Loon nodded, understanding the importance of the event. What should I do? Simply be yourself and open your heart to the experiences and lessons of the night. The ball is a place of revelations and realizations, a duchess advised. As the sun set, the ballroom lit up, glowing with an ethereal light. Creatures and beings from all corners of the land of Wincy began to arrive, each unique and magnificent. Lin entered the ballroom, feeling a sense of awe. He mingled with the guests, listening to their stories and sharing his own. The atmosphere was one of joy and celebration, but also of deep understanding and connection. As the nose drew to a close, Li realized how much he had grown since his arrival in the land of Wincy. He had learned about clarity, harmony, truth, strategy, and the importance of making one's own path. The Duchess approached him as the guests began to depart. Your journey continues, Liam. Remember the lessons of tonight and carry them with you. Uh. Liam thanked her and stepped out of the ballroom feeling ready for the next chapter of his adventure in the land of Wincy. The tea party with the Mad Hatter, as Liam left the grandeur of the Dreamland Ball behind. He stumbled upon a peculiar sight. In a clearing surrounded by whimsically twisted trees, there was a large table set for a tea party the table was laden with an assortment of teapots and cuts, cakes, and sandwiches, all arranged in a seemingly haphazard manner. Sitting at the table was a figure with a wet adorned hat adorned with furious ornaments. His clothes a vagrant mix of patterns and powers. No. Yeah. A new guest. Do you enjoy us for tea? The figure exclaimed with an eccentric smile. This was the Mad Hatter. Liam approached the table, feeling a mixture of curiosity and caution. Thank you. I'd be delighted, he applied, taking a seat. As they conversed, Liam found himself lapped in a whirlwind of riddles, paradoxes, and playful banter. The conversation was confusing, yet strangely enlightening 
pushing him to think in new, creative ways. A riddle for you, Lahadar suddenly said. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Hmm. Liam fraught for a moment. Because they both produce notes, though they are very flat. A layer never put with the wrong end in front, he replied, recalling a line he had read once. The Hatter roared with laughter, and brilliantly answered, You have a knack for this, Liam. As the tea party continued, Liam felt his mind opening up to new possibilities of thinking and reasoning. The mad Hatterjurs peculiar perspective on the world was infectious, and Liam found himself enjoying the nonsensical yet insightful convo conversation. The tea party with the mad hatter continued, with each passing moment filled with more absurdities and whimsical discussions. Joining them was a March Hare, who hopped in, bringing up a platter of peculiar-looking pastries. Try the moon pies, they're simply lunar. Lunar, the March Hare said, pushing the plate towards Liam. Liam, embracing the oddity of the situation, took a bite. To his surprise, the pastry seemed to change flavors as he ate it. Incredible, he exclaimed. It's all about expecting the unexpected here. The Mad Hatter chimed in, pouring a tea that shifted from blue to green. Liam found himself lost in the conversation, which seemed to loop and twist like a labyrinth. He was asked riddles about time, given paradoxes about space, and engaged in discussions about the nature of reality. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows over the tea party, the Mad Hatter leaned in with a more serious tone. Hey, we'll in the world of Lacey, logic and reason have their place, but so does the illogical and unreasonable. It's the balance that creates magic. We nodded, understanding the deeper truth in the Hatter's words. It's about seeing the world from different perspectives, isn't it? Prayer. Exactly, the Mad Hatter exclaimed. You see, to navigate through life, one must be as mag as a hatter, which luckily I am. The marcher laughed, and Eva Liam couldn't help but join in. The conversation had been bewildering, but it had opened his mind to new ways of thinking and seeing the world. As the tea party came to an end, the mad hatter stood up and bowed. Liam. You have been a most delightful guest. Remember, a touch of Magnus is the key to breaking free from the confines of ordinary perception. Liam thanked the Mad Hatter and the March Hare for the extraordinary experience. He left the tea party feeling refreshed, with his thoughts swirling in new and exciting directions. As Liam walked away from a tea party, the surroundings began to shift and change. The trees elongated, bendy in impossible angles, and the path ahead twisted in spirals. Liam remembered the Mad Hatter's words about Inobrese not no sight to let go of his need for Norinos here, the Lani name served to be guided by Mwonsukur Naukart. Soon, he encountered a dormouse, dozing in a teacup atop a small table set for one. The dormouse stirred as Liam approached. Oh, hello there, a dormouse mumbled sleepily. 
care for some dream tea. <laughs> it reveals what your heart truly desires. Intrigued, Liam accepted the offer. The tea was a swirling galaxy of colors, and with each sip, he felt his mind drifting into my turn-like state. What do you see? The Dormouse asked, its eyes half-closed. Him closed his eyes and images began to form in his mind. He saw himself back home, but with a sense of confidence and purpose he hadn't felt before. He saw the lessons he had learned in the land of whimsy helping him navigate challenges and inspiring those around him. I see a better version of myself, William shared, his voice filled with wonder. That's the power of dream tea. It shows you not just what could be, but what will be if you believe in it. The Dormouse said, before drifting back to sleep. Liam felt a surge of hope and determination. He thanked the sleeping Dormouse and continued on his path, the dream-like images still vivid in his mind. The path led him to a large mirror standing alone in the middle of the forest. Curious, Ian looked into the mirror, but instead of his reflection, he sings from his journey in the weird sea the chance he had gained. You've come a long way. Liam, Liam, a voice said from behind him. Leon turned to see the Cheshire Cat, perched on a branch with a knowing smile. Yes, I have, Liam replied, looking back at the mirror. And I feel like I'm just getting started. The best journeys always feel that way. The Cheshire Cat purred. Remember, what you've learned here will stay with you long after you've left. With those words, the Cheshire Cat vanished, leaving only its grain hanging in the air. Wayne turned back to the path, ready for whatever came next, his heart light with the magic of the land of whimsy. Continuing down the spiraling path, Liam soon found himself at another peculiar setup. This time, it was a table laden with various hats, each more bizarre and extraordinary than the last. Standing beside the table was a figure with a gentle smile, draped in a cloak adorned with patterns of clocks and gears. Oh, a day, Liam. I am the time tailor, the figure created here. You can try on hats that let you glimpse moments from different times. Intrigued, Leon approached the table and picked up a hat that looked like an upside-down clock. As he placed it on his head, his surroundings blurred and he found himself witnessing a scene from his past. He saw himself as a young boy, full of wonder an imagination playing in his backyard. Removing the hat, Liam felt a wave of nostalgia. That was incredible, incredible, he said, a bit overwhelmed. Perhaps can show you more than just the past. Try another, the time, Tyler encouraged. Liam and Atlin tried on a hat shaped like a starry night sky. This time, he saw a potential future, one where he used his experiences in the land of whimsy to inspire and teach others. Each hat offered a different glimpse of time, some from his past, some possibilities of the future, and some complete enigmas. With each vision, Lane gained a deeper understanding of his journey 
and how each moment had shaped him. You see, time is more than just a sequence of events. It's a tapestry of experiences that shapes who we are. The time Taylor explained. Your time in the land of Rimsey is a part of that tapestry, adding depth and color to your life story. We nodded, profoundly moved by the experience. Mm. Thank you for this gift, he said, his voice filled with gratitude. As you continue your journey, remember that every moment is a stitch in the fabric of time. Make each one count, the time tailor advised, his eyes twinkling with wisdom. Leaving the time of Taylor and his remarkable hats behind, Luin starts a renewed sense of purpose. He was ready to face the final part of his journey in the land of Lingsi, carrying a sense of Tamarth and experience. Lian continued his journey, reflecting on the profound experiences he had encountered. The path ahead gradually cleared, leading him to a large, ornate door staying alone in the midst of the forest. Intrigued, he pushed the door open and stepped through. On the other side, he found himself back at the tea party. But this turn, it was different. The table was now empty and the Mad Hatter was packing up his teapots and cups. Ah, we are back so soon. Did you enjoy your journey through time? <sighs> the Mad Hatter asked with a knowing smile. Yes, it was enlightening. I saw moments from my past and possibilities for my future, Lahim replied. That's the beauty of Wonderland. It shows you not just who you are, but who you can be, the Hatter said, placing the last two part into a large trunk. Lee nodded, feeling a sense of closure. What now? Where do I go from here? No? No. You go wherever you wish to go. The possibilities are endless. The Mad Hatter replied, closing the trunk with a flourish. Remember, William, you carry the magic of Wonderland within you. Use it well. With those final words, the Mad Hatter tipped his hat and vanished leaving me alone with his thoughts. Lin stood there for a moment, taking it all in. He had journeyed through a land of whimsy and wonder, facing challenges and learning invaluable lessons. He felt changed, more confident and ready to face whatever lay ahead in his own world. Taking a deep breath, Liam walked back through the ornate door, which closed behind him with a soft click. As he stepped out, he found himself back in the real world, but with a new perspective and a heart full of wonder.